You are where you are today because of choices. Some of those choices you've made. Some of those choices others, well, they've made them for you. Either way, we're all individuals and should be treated as such. No one is immune from the trials and tribulations of being human. There will always be a cause and there will always be an effect. Let me introduce myself. I'm Jason. I'm a paramedic. I'm about to quit my job and live homeless for half a year. Why would someone do that? For me personally, I've been struggling with PTSD after working 13 years in EMS. I've seen the worst of the worst on a daily basis, and then I've survived a major ambulance crash. I decided I need change. I need kindness. I need my faith restored in humanity. I want to see just how far I can travel, funded only by the kindness and generosity of others. I want to see just how kind we are to one another throughout the country. And most importantly, I want to highlight the issues in the homeless community by sharing the stories of others who are struggling along the way. Here is my journey. Got my van packed, going away in the morning. Ain't gonna take no bullshit, I'm going alone. Got my portable party, I'll be shitting all alone. <laughs> Until I met this asshole Dave Riley, y'all. I think I'll sing the blues, happy song. You know, when I first heard the idea, I'm like, he's gonna die. He's 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 crazy. Like this is crazy. But the other side of me was like, I've always wondered how much homeless people can really get by in day to day life. You see him on the corners every day, and I'm like, he's basically giving up everything to go do that, which I think is super awesome. The more I thought about it, the more I believed it, and the more I had a lot of confidence in seeing the passion that he had for it to be a homeless man. I've never seen such a drive in my life. I don't think homeless people even have that kind of passion. I think he's a freaking idiot, but uh, you know, you gotta try and follow your dreams, so go for it, young man. I say that's very ballsy and it, it takes a lot of guts to do something like that. You're quitting a job that has absolute financial security, either in inner facility or 911, and you're doing this on your own, and you're literally trying to handle on the uh, goodwill of others. You don't know how people are good or how people are bad nowadays. Uh, the idea is strange and uh, I would never do it myself, but uh, he's been a paramedic for quite some time and I don't think I have what it takes to be a paramedic and he tells me stories sometimes about what he encounters and sees and I'm actually glad he's taking a break from that. They say follow your dreams and uh, his dreams to do this documentary. I think it's crazy. I wouldn't have done it, but you know, it takes a a strong person to do such a strong project. Jason fits that persona pretty well. No. Never once ever. Oh, I have. I did before, back when I was naive, and then I kind of woke up and I was like, half these people are dishonest and they're basically trying to get free money. What do you think of homeless people? I don't like them. Okay. Why is that? Because we live in America, and I don't think there's any reason to be homeless because we have every opportunity in this country. I mean, you can pretty much achieve whatever you want. I think it's pretty sad that there's so many people that uh, need some help for one reason or another, whether it's, you know, a mental illness or they're just down on their luck. I, I think that there's resources out there that could be used. It really... Um, kind of makes me cringe when I see all these mega churches out there that have all this empty space and claim to be serving the community, but they don't. They have their doors shut, you know, Monday through Saturday when they really could be helping people that could really use some help. Uh, yeah, I have. Um, I used to do money for a while until I saw one guy. Um, 
I saw him literally walk into a gas station, got a gas station and walk back out with a, a 40 of Mickey's. I have. And then I saw that homeless person go to the store and buy beer with it. So I I decided my sister does this packs where you put some, you know, water and some sandwiches and fruit snacks are in there. And I think that's a better idea than give them money. Usually not money in most instances. I mean, aside from it being based off what the sign says, like, I need food. Okay, well, here's some food and water. But also talking with people, you can get an idea from the homeless people as to what they want the money for. Um, Portland has a huge abundance of homeless people, so you could be like, yeah, I'll get you some food, let's go grab some food from one of these food carts, and they say, no, never mind, I'll ask somebody else, and obviously they're not hungry, they just want something else. I just got my, my first meal given to me. A gentleman pulled up uh, with a bag of food from McDonald's and, and a bottle of water for me, and I mean, wow. People are giving today, and it's it's all walks of life, man. This has been pretty emotional. Uh, I've never had to do this before, so, all right. So today, I had my first experience, basically, living as a panhandler, trying to survive, and just seeing if I can make it. And I gotta tell you, I've worked my entire life. I've never, I've never had to beg for anything. And it was one of the most nerve-wracking, uncomfortable situations that I've ever been in in my life. First, I tried to go to a church, and I was going to uh, panhandle outside of the exits. And when I got there, I pulled into the parking lot. There was security walking all around the place, walking around my van. And I, I just did not feel like I was okay to be there, like I had to go. So I decided that I was going to drive down the road a little ways and I drove by the freeway and I saw that there was a freeway exit that was, that was available. So I, I walked to the side of the freeway and I sat there and I didn't know what to expect. I've, I've never done this before. I've never asked for a handout for anything, but I was blown away. I sat there on the side of the freeway with a simple sign that said homeless, broke, hungry, Happy Easter, today's Easter. And within the first 10, 15 minutes, somebody drove up, they rolled their window down, they handed me a dollar bill. And then right behind him, the car behind him, rolls the window down and they hand me a $10 bill. And I, I took the money and I went and I sat back down and I, I began to cry. Like I was so overwhelmed with the emotion of what had just happened. Wow. I just got my first donations. I got a $1 bill and a $10 bill. I can eat today. It's pretty remarkable. I mean, I've never had to beg for anything and that was awesome that people just handed me, handed me some money, man. <laughs> I, feel, I feel pretty blessed right now. I felt like a weight was lifted because I knew that I could eat for today. I've never had to ask for help like that. And it, it felt humiliating and embarrassing at, at first and very uncomfortable. People would pull up and they would just look at you and then go off. There was a lady that drove by. She told me to get to work, you know. She doesn't know me. She doesn't know my story. But overall, a lot of people were very generous and they gave. And within a very short amount of time, I had made a significant amount of money, but not only that, I've received several days worth of food. You know, people handing me a meal from McDonald's. Guy pulls up with a box full of goodies and snacks. Another lady uh, gave me a bag that had toiletries and snacks and toothpaste and personal care stuff. I mean, this lady pulls up and she rolls the window down for for the back seat and says my daughter has something for you a little girl hands me a couple dollars uh, it was amazing i hope to see that i hope that that is what i can report at the end of this project is that america is giving all right i got a guy coming over to me i think we're going to start our first turf war i don't know why huh what Maybe another hour? Is that cool? 
All right, brother. All right, man, he was just asking me how long I'm gonna be here. I thought it was gonna get kind of hostile there for a minute. He started yelling at me. So I'm standing out here at this uh, Fry Shopping Center in Scottsdale, and it's been kind of a rough day. I've made a little bit, enough to eat, and uh, this lady, she saw my sign, and when she drove up, she uh, was digging in her purse, but then she had to take off. Well, about five minutes later, she comes back around and hands me a $20 bill. But that totally changed my day. Uh, just 10 minutes ago, I was going to give up for the day and call it a day, but man, she really stepped up and, and, and blessed me. I don't, I don't think she knows how far that's going to go. That's pretty amazing. After a few days in Phoenix, I now had enough money and a full tank of gas to hit the road. Now, here in Gallup, New Mexico, I'm staying in this Walmart parking lot for the night. And I saw there was a couple guys that were out on the street corner panhandling, trying to, to make whatever they could. So I decided that I was going to go talk to them. You guys making it okay? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I see you guys for a while? I brought them a little bit of food and asked them if I could sit down and we had a conversation for about half an hour. Now the guy, his name was Robert. At one point he was assaulted and his left eye is gone. It was crushed. It was missing. I can't see them, they're steady. I only have one eye. What happened to your other eye? Some natives from Arizona, they jumped. Oh, jeez. I busted my eye and I lost my vision. Oh, jeez. And he's trying to get services so that he can go down to Albuquerque and get a, get a new prosthetic eye. I had asked him if he had ever felt afraid while out here. And he told me that he used to work a different corner down a little ways. Uh, but recently somebody was actually stabbed down there and so that kind of spooked him and scared him and he just decided that uh, that's not the area that he wants to be in while we were there talking a couple people pulled up guy gave him a buck or two another lady gave him some canned food and he was pretty grateful for that i was asking robert about his past i was asking him uh kind of what got him there and he told me that he had a problem with addiction that he's on the street because he likes alcohol and he, he just can't shake it. So yesterday I left Gallup, New Mexico, heading to Albuquerque, and I have not taken a shower in the last several days. And I gotta tell you, I love to be clean. I like to take one or two showers a day. I like to feel clean, deodorant, shaved, feeling good. And so I was feeling really in the dumps, okay? I decided that I needed to try and find a resource that was going to allow me to take a shower uh, either for free or for very cheap. I found this homeless day shelter in Albuquerque. They offer services uh, to the homeless where every day they have a breakfast and they have a free lunch and they can just kind of hang out there and come together and visit. So I decided that I was gonna hit it up. I got there uh, right as lunch was getting ready to stop for the day and walked in and I sat down and I, I was served by uh, some pretty amazing people. They had a smile on their face, they were excited to be there it seemed like, they were very kind and generous. The meal was really good. I had Brussels sprouts, I had broccoli, I had, uh, it was like a Philly cheesesteak type burger, I had a banana split, french fries, I had a drink, I mean it was awesome. I felt good there, I felt welcomed, I felt accepted. From there I went back to try and take a shower and the showers were already locked up for the day so I was I was kind of bummed and so I started to look for some other resources and decided well I know that truck stops have showers how much are those so start calling around some of them want like twelve dollars twelve dollars to come in and take a shower I thought that was crazy I thought that was way too much money so decided well there's gyms that offer free trial memberships decided well i'm gonna call the planet fitness i know that they've got them around well, i called them and i found out that for 22 dollars a month i can go to any one of them i can take a shower i can get clean 
over the first week or so, I have been able to make enough money to at least start that commitment. I mean, hopefully I continue to make enough to keep going, but I tell you, feeling clean and being clean is just a boost of confidence. Well, I'm out here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is my sixth day. Thanks, buddy. No problem, you have a good day. All right, there we go. About 80 cents. I gotta tell you, man, Albuquerque is the roughest spot that I've been at so far. It just seems like this whole city, everywhere I've been, is just loaded with homeless people. And I think because of that, very few people are actually making eye contact with me. I haven't noticed that anywhere else yet though. Only in the mornings. So the last couple mornings that I've tried to panhandle, it seemed like nobody's paying attention, but in the afternoons in the other cities, people were all over it. Now, while I was standing on a street corner trying to make a few bucks, I was minding my own business, and this guy walks across the street, looks at me straight in the eye, and comes running right towards me with his fist ready to go. He's ready to swing on me. How you doing, buddy? I don't want no problem, man. I don't want no problem. What? Why are you coming out? All right, I didn't provoke him. I didn't do anything. Well, he came over and he was heavily intoxicated. He was wanting me to buy him alcohol, but he was ready to attack me. Yeah, you came up on me, man. So, came up on you? Yeah. I know I did. I know, it freaked me out, bro. I'm not about that, though. I, if I have to, I would, but I'm not going to. I thought it was going to fuck him. No, we don't want to fight, bro. All right. But I was able able to stop him. I was able to talk him down. I was able to use some of the skills and the, the techniques that I've learned through my job working as a paramedic. And it took about 10 minutes or so, but after a little while, uh, I, I was able to get him to leave peacefully. But shortly thereafter, another guy came up to us and was trying to sell us merchandise and whatnot. And it just did not feel like a very good area, and I had to get the hell out of there. I went south to this little small city, and I found a truck stop there. Pulled in there for the night, and I stayed, and I felt pretty at peace. I felt pretty safe there. My, my funds are starting to kind of run low as far as what I've already made, and it seems that I'm spending more money on gas than I am food. In the first week alone, I've only spent like $1.75 on food. And that's just been off of what other people have given me. And that's been off of uh, what I was able to get from a food bank and then also having a lunch at the mission. So I woke up at the truck stop and I decided I kind of want to try to see if I can make a little bit of money and maybe some gas. So I stood out away from the entrance a little ways. I had my gas can there with me and I had just a simple sign. All right, the sign was need money for gas thank you that was it awesome man i've been out here for about an hour now and i had some people just drive up ask me where i'm trying to go they handed me a ten dollar bill pretty awesome great start to a day much better than yesterday yesterday uh, i was so so scared and uncomfortable after that encounter with that guy in the inner cities man i, I think you almost have to rewrite the rules of what i'm doing uh but we'll just see how this goes you know if i can get a a couple bucks an hour out here that's totally worth it and I stood up and I was kind of walking around moving around as people would come in I would give them a little wave and a smile they would acknowledge they would go they'd fill up and as people would come back out they'd start handing me a couple bucks here's a dollar here's a five dollar bill here's a ten dollar bill hey can I fill up your gas within about two and a half hours two people filled up my five gallon gas tank for me I mean, I was blown away. I had 10 gallons of gas within two and a half hours or so. I had uh, about 26 bucks. Now, the day before, I put myself in danger in Albuquerque, and I think I made about $1.60. I mean, that's a huge difference. It's been pretty awesome to see uh, people's generosity. But not only that, I've also helped some people along the way, just with food. You know, bring them over a snack. I, I gave a guy 
um, a whole box of food today. I hope that uh, I can continue to do that. I hope that uh, some of these new strategies that I'm starting to learn will pay off because I've got some big stretches of road ahead of me that don't have bigger cities, you know. I'm going to be going through the last part of southern New Mexico and then through, uh, through Texas where there's just small cities throughout. And what I learned today, and this was a big thing, I was in a very, very, very small city, but it had a truck stop. And that truck stop paid off big time, you know. It paid off big time. In a very short amount of time, I was able to get exactly what I needed to get to my next destination. <laughs> two sacks of food not quite sure what's in here but these are great people man great people great service their families come in here leave them with full baskets of food it's a non-profit organization that does not receive any government subsidies it's all via donation it's pretty incredible Hey guys, Jason here, Jason's Most Excellent Van Adventures. I have made it all the way to Fort Stockton. Uh, there's a guy that's sitting out here on the side of the road here. He's got a sign saying he's an old vet and just needs some help with food. So I'm going to do the right thing and uh, pay it forward. Let's go out there um, and see this interaction, all right? How you doing, sir? I got a bag of food. Can I give this to you? Yes, sir. There's stuff in there for sandwiches. There's some beef stew, some pasta stuff, and some snack bars. All right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank Take care, you. and you have a great day, okay? Okay. Thank right. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, guys. It's as easy as that. Earlier today, I had left Van Horn, Texas, and I went to Fort Stockton. Well, I went to another travel station. And within a few minutes, I had a, a guy approach me with some water that he wanted to give me. But then he was also, like, trying to evangelize me as well. Y'all not see life. If you don't believe in Christ, you don't have life. Up. But the wrath of God abide on. Uh, shortly thereafter, the police came. Fort Stockton PD came, and they were very, very pleasant. But they had informed me that, you know, I was breaking a city ordinance. I told them what I was doing, and they were very kind to me. They ran my ID, made sure that, it, you know, it came back okay, that I wasn't a criminal or anything like that. But uh, all in all, those guys were uh, pretty outstanding to me. But uh, I thanked them, but in that short period of time, I only made a buck. It really wasn't anything significant. But you know what? Just that $1 interaction was uh, something positive of somebody giving to me and it all is going to add up to the big picture in the end. I've been up since, I'm homeless, I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning trying to get some work, man. Can you ask me any change for a cup of coffee, brother? I don't have any change on me, buddy. Thank you, man. How long have you been homeless for? Uh, four years, man. Four years? Sucks. Are you from here? Yeah. Wow. I was raised here. I was born in Florida. Did you ever work out here or anything? Yeah, I work. I, I just unloaded 80 pounds of wood this morning for a freaking dollar, bro. That's how bad I'm looking for work. Jeez. They told me they didn't have no money. I said, man, I just need a cup of coffee. Unload it all for you. What's up? Yeah. And then the three dudes unloading it, I was fucking doing circles around them, man. It's crazy. Where do you stay at night? I stay behind a church up here. On, up here. <laughs> Is there a shelter back there? No, I got pallets built up like a little house there you go the chap awesome. I do a lot of work for her around there she lets me camp there what do you do for like food and money and whatnot is there services around here man there's some but they don't really do much for you man. Like, what's your name my name is Mark Mark Jason what's your name Jason Jason Good Good it's nice okay. to meet you it's really neat. I used to be a sous chef at the Marriott I used to get off at midnight. I used to help people with money out here, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's crazy. I've had three companies here. I'm going through a divorce after 29 years. My wife's a chronic alcoholic. She stabbed me. <laughs> oh, jeez. For not going to get her beer before they stopped selling at night. Yeah. Yeah, I, used to, I, I usually would go and get it for her. 
because I didn't want her drinking and driving. Sure. So she woke me up a little too late one night, and I had 15 miles to drive to the nearest freaking store, dude. Yeah. So I told her, there's no way I'm going to make it. I went back to bed. She came in and stabbed me. She said, take that to work with you. Jesus. I was like, man, really? I was like 29 years of marriage, and now I don't even want to sleep in the same house with her no more. Yeah. You know? I mean, huh. What yeah. kind of services are available here in San Antonio for people that are homeless or need I mean, a little bit of help? They have a new place called Haven for Hope. It's really nothing, man. Nothing. I mean, they take you in there, they put you outside anyway. You're outside. So Jeez. what's the deal of living in there out here? Yeah. I'm better off out here. Yeah. I ain't got nobody over me telling me what to do, where to go, how to do it. Sure. You sure. know? I mean, I think places like that are for people that are a little more weak anyway sure they they need help i got man i work yeah. i've been out here four years and i still got calluses bro you know i just asked these guys over here doing subway i just asked them to unload all the stuff in their truck for a cup of coffee bro really? and they tell me no oh. but i asked somebody for help they tell me get a fucking job go yeah. figure and I work better than most of these dudes. I get up every day at four o'clock and I run around and hit up all these construction companies and ask them for work. But really, I have jobs I can do. I can be working the Alamo Dome. I can be working in the mall right there. But the, the temp services that send you, you have to have ID. Yeah. They just stole my bag the other day. So, and it had my wallet in it. What and kind my, of work history do you have? Oh, I do all kinds of work. I do construction, everything. Yeah. Except electricity. I don't like electricity. <laughs> I don't I, blame you. I mean, I'll run the lines through the walls and stuff, and I ain't hooking nothing up. Yeah. Man. But I, I got a culinary arts degree. Got my associates, you know. I've had my own plumbing company here. I've had my own foundation company. I do yeah. all construction. Work. Yeah. And it's like, I'm looking at these dudes, what they're doing. I can do what they're doing, and yeah. I can do it faster than they're doing it. And it's crazy. You know, how do you think, you know, you, you've got all that experience. What do you think happened in your life that kind of put you on the on the street instead of keeping that going? Well, being on the streets was my choice because I didn't want to live under the same roof with my wife anymore. Sure. I didn't trust her, you yeah. know, after she stabbed me, bro, that shit hurt. Yeah. yeah, I was in bed for three months behind that. Jeez. She cracked my rib and everything. Dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She got you pretty darn good. She though. got me pretty good. Do you ever right. go like on a Craigslist and find like the day jobs that are, that are on there? No, I usually go to the day laborers. I'm registered with pay setters, labor on demand, labor max. I mean, I'm going to live for like 10 of them. Yeah. And I can go to any one of them and they'll send me out. Yeah. If I go to DMV today and I get an ID, I can go before 2 o'clock and sit inside one of these places and I'll get a ticket before the end of the night. Okay. And if not, they have night tickets that I can pull. I can go to Fresh. I can make 10 bucks an hour just doing vegetables. Bro, yeah. like separating, big, pulling the stems out of grapes, simple stuff. Yeah. And if the cops see you talking to me, they're going to think I'm panhandling you or something. They won't try to harass me, yeah. give me a hard time, that's, you know. That's no good. And it, it's against the law to panhandle here. Yeah. And I know I'm, I'm a Christian, you know. That's why I panhandle right here, because I ask him to watch over me and protect me, put that hedge of protection around yeah. me, protect me from them people, you know, because people walk by and they don't even know your circumstances man and they tell you get a job and all this stuff man i i could have a spider bite on my leg keeping me from doing something it could be something wrong with me physically you never know yeah you know what i mean and i hear some of the stuff people say to people out here and i'm like this is so ridiculous man and like sometimes they'll stop oh man i got some change hold on they'll pull out a penny Oh, geez. And give it to me, and I'm like, man, thank you. God bless you, sir. You have a blessed day. Yeah. People be looking at me crazy because I'm thanking them for a penny. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that penny goes a long way, people. If every one of you'd give me one, boy, I'd be somewhere right now. Yeah. I wouldn't be here asking for help. Sure. You know, Jesus said, you have a beggar at the gates, and he's asking for alms, blessings, bro. Uh -huh. He said, none of you showed him no compassion. But the dogs licked his wounds, bro. Wow. That's sad when a dog shows more compassion for a human being than another human being, brother. Absolutely. And especially when you're sitting low enough and the dog passes you, the dog says hi, the people keep walking, the dog stops to say hi to you, you pet the dog, the dog walks off, the dog's three blocks away and he's still looking back at you because yeah. he knows you're hurting, bro. Mm -hmm. That's bad. Absolutely. A dog knows, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's crazy. God bless me. Yep. I'm going to need that for the burger. Can you take care of Mark? Yeah. That's the look on your see me now. again. Y'all can yep. talk to me anytime. Bro. Have a good day, all right? Yeah, y'all have a blessed day.
All right, it is pouring down rain right now. I mean, torrential downpours, thunder and lightning. It is just unbelievable right now. Coming down, uh, my van is kind of holding up. I got some water coming in on the back. Uh, one of the areas where I have my solar panels put in, I got a little bit of water dripping through, so I'm gonna have to take care of that tomorrow. I'm gonna pack it up and call it a night here. Hopefully the van holds up. Uh, there is some water dripping in the back. Um, I've got a little basin going, kept catching it. So uh, from the looks of it on the uh, storm tracker, I got about another 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and then I'm gonna have to assess like, <laughs> you know, this, the uh, carpet ceiling material here is kind of sagging. It feels maybe a little bit wet. So I think we got some leaks coming in, but I'll have to assess it and then uh, try and fix whatever uh, leaks that I can find in the morning. So, all right, well, <laughs> that's it for now. Last night I had torrential downpour and rain. I've got a couple leaks to the van, so I need to address it because I was trying to sleep and I just got leaked on all night long. So I went into Walmart and I got some weather strip and I'm gonna try and fix the problem or at least temporarily fix the problem uh, because at one point the van was in an accident and uh, the back end is not quite sealed up very, very well. So I'm gonna fix it. Hopefully this will be good enough to keep from water coming in the back. I had a couple areas also that are on the roof uh, where I've mounted my solar panels and whatnot that were also leaking. So I just bought just some regular silicone and I'm gonna try and uh, reinforce those areas where I did notice water coming down. It was really tough to get behind this area to put the, put the silicone where I believe it's leaking, but I think it's going to do the job. We'll be able to tell here here shortly, I guess, if we get another rainstorm. All right, I'm here in Houston, Texas. Panhandling out at this mall. Try, I'm going to try the other side of my sign. The old astronaut test dummy for hire. At least I get a laugh out of people. I may not get a dollar, but I may get a laugh. It's kind of a sketchy area because I got a freeway right here. Oh shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I gotta keep my head on a swivel out here. It seems I've had a lot of trouble with like the funny and clever signs. I just don't know that if it's like because of the areas that I've been in or where I've chosen. I get laughs, uh, but it doesn't really convert to a whole lot of dollars. And so far it seems like just your, your sentimental need money for gas thank you is like a, a big payoff. I've used that sign for an hour in several locations and one day I got 15 gallons of gas and $77 in one hour. That really seems to be the best so far. We're going to go for like 10 or 15 more minutes, okay? This location is... Uh, this location is high speed. Nice. It's like a fucking demolition derby out here. Jesus Christ. Well, I think when I go to leave this area, I'm definitely not pulling out on this intersection. Holy shit. These cars are whipping down the road going 60, 70 miles an hour. Damn. This is almost more dangerous than Albuquerque. Uh, so I traveled from uh, San Antonio, Texas, all the way to Houston. And while I was in Houston, um, I was able to meet up with a person that follows uh, my project on, on social media. And uh, that person's also a paramedic. And we got to talking about the homeless population there. 
And he had told me that, uh, you know, about a decade ago when Hurricane Katrina happened, a lot of people that were in New Orleans had been displaced to Houston, that there was a lot of uh, housing that was built up, but the economy really couldn't handle the influx of people, that there wasn't the jobs to support it. And so he said that a lot of people that came out from New Orleans to Houston ended up becoming homeless. And while they were out there, in order to survive and get what they needed to get, they would be out on the streets panhandling. So I was at a truck stop. This was just outside of uh, Orange, Texas. I woke up in the morning and I found that there was a family of six parked in their SUV right next to me. Now the thing that caught my eye was the SUV was packed from floor to ceiling. And on the roof, they was just loaded full of totes. Basically, these people's entire lives was just packed right into one vehicle. And as I was talking to them, I found out that it was a fairly young couple that had four very, very young children, like under five, six years old. Some of them still in diapers. And as I was talking to them, they had said that, that life had just got to the point where they just couldn't afford it anymore. And they wanted to go out and seek a new adventure, a new life, and something new. I'm Amanda. I go by the name of Mandy. Um, that's what I do. I'm a life coach, so I go by Coach Mandy. This is my husband, Adam. I'm Adam. I am a Christian DJ. I, um, I have a podcast that we're doing on from the road called The Blessed Big Show. So you guys are traveling in your vehicle with four kids. Yes. Now, have, have uh, you guys experienced any acts of kindness while you've been on the road? Many. Yes. 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 Many. We have uh, acts of kindness and also divine appointments we've been calling them. You know, I was calling them coincidences at first, um, but lately we've been calling them divine appointments. We've had people let us use their house to, uh, to shower. There was a, a pastor that we we parked behind to get gas. We parked right behind him, pulled up right behind him. Coincidentally, right? Um, he turns, he's, he's, he's in front of us and he's turning, looking at the boxes, looking at our car and kind of keeps like, hey, he's, he's kind of like looking at, looking at what we're doing. And every time he turned, I would see that he had this cross on his shirt, which that's kind of been my, my, my signification to like pull, pull out one of my flyers and pass it out. So I did that. I got out and talked to him. Um, we exchanged contact information. We met up again in Dallas. He let us use his church parking lot to park. He gave us... We met somebody else there. Yeah, another... That another, let us stay in, the, in their house. Like yeah, in he was... House. He was flipping the house. He was closing on the house the next day and he's like, tonight I want to bless you, I want to gift you with something. And he gave us the keys to his house, like out of nowhere. They just, <laughs> he let, let us stay, stay there, in the house gave that, us a hundred That bucks. he had just sold, he was going to close gave on that deal. Really and good. also, also that, that pastor that night before that guy came out to offer us that house, he had told his uh, parishioners about what we were doing and they oh. they gave us an offering. They collected some money for us. Oh. I think it was 180 something. So you guys have been on the road now for two months, there's, there's six of you. <laughs> Would you definitely say that people's kindness is, has helped you guys along the way? Oh, for yes. sure. At the right moments, at the right time. Right it's... at... Mm -hmm. Now, I couldn't imagine trying to travel with four very, very small children, let alone live in and out of an SUV like that. They said that every day it takes an hour to two just to break down and set up their camp every night. They had told me that one of the biggest challenges was being able to keep everybody clean because they had a Planet Fitness membership, but they couldn't always take the kids there to get clean. Well, I happened to have a, an extra solar shower with me that I didn't need, so I decided, you know, I'm going to help these guys out, and I'm going to give it to them. So I did. I gave these guys the solar shower, and they were very, very grateful. It was a small thing, but it was a really big thing to them. Woo, Louisiana! So I was in a little... West Louisiana truck stop, getting ready to set up and call it a night. I had this gal come up to me. She was an elderly lady. She was homeless. She said, hey, is there any chance that you're going to Lafayette? I really need a ride. I'm going to a women's shelter. I need a place to stay. Hi, I'm Zane. My name's Rebecca Nockin, nice and I appreciate you. everything y'all do. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I was getting ready to call it a night. And Lafayette was definitely not in my plans for the day. It was another 70 miles down the road, but this gal needed some help. She had a bicycle and all of her belongings with her. And so 
I was able to take her bike, put it up on the roof, strap it down, put her belongings in there, and we went for a ride. How long have you been homeless? Off and on, about seven years. And it's very difficult. Have you had, have you had a job or any regular source of income before? Yes, I have. I, I worked for a company and they went out of business. Well, they sold the business. And I was staying with some friends uh, for a short time, and they moved out of state. And would you say that people are generally pretty nice to you on a daily basis? Not when you live in a long-term uh, homelessness. They're not, because they don't like it. Because uh, they've never experienced it, so they don't know, they don't truly understand. And the only ones that will, that mostly try to help you is if you go to churches. You know, at least they give you something to eat. Do you have any friends or, or family here that you, you can help with? I have three children, and they all have big families, and I'm so glad of that, thankful. But they are all scattered out. How often do you see your, your children? Not often at all. And I don't want them to know I'm homeless, you know. She was very, very kind to me. And the, the awesome thing was, is as we were traveling down the freeway, she was telling me the history of each town. You know, she had a very sound mind. She knew exactly where she was at. She had told me the history of, of, uh, of Lafayette, of Baton Rouge, of New Orleans, of just the different areas. So for me, yeah, I drove another 70 miles down the road, but I got a free history lesson along the way, and I met somebody that was very, very kind. I'm really glad that I was open to, to doing that because I learned a lot that day, and I think that's how we should always be. I think we should be open to learn. I think we should be open to talk to others and hear other people's stories. So good to meet y'all. Thank you so much. You got all your stuff? Yeah. All right, so yeah, good to you. meet you. Have a good day. Y'all too. Yeah. So I made it into New Orleans and I needed to make some money. My, my money's starting to run kind of low. So I went to this truck stop and I started to panhandle. And within a very short amount of time, I started to acquire what I needed. But shortly after that, I had an encounter with a police officer. This police officer pulled up and he was extremely aggressive. He didn't like the fact that I was filming. He wanted me to shut off my cameras. What is that? Camera? Turn off. I'm filming a documentary, sir. You are? Yes, sir, I am. About human kindness. Human kindness? I'm a paramedic from Phoenix. I quit my job a month ago. I'm traveling. You should have done that. You should have kept the job. Well, I travel the country. Driver's license, doctor. registration, insurance. I just didn't feel like I was like I was accepted or that it was okay. Got my wallet. It's in the van. Is it? Yeah, my brother's Who inside. Who else is in the van? What's up? Who else is in the van? My brother's inside the establishment. Who's going to them? Find some water. Yeah, money for water for them? Yeah. Sir, I'm filming a documentary. You got a permit for that? I don't need a permit. You do? Yeah, you making money off the documentary? You don't plan on making money? You're not gonna sell it? You need a permit. Get your license. <laughs> my, my vehicle's off. Sit in the car, dude. Yeah, get it back. Have a seat. He was not kind at all. Even after explaining to him that I was filming a documentary about human kindness, he was still even more and more and more rude to me. So one thing that I've wanted to experiment with while I'm going from city to city is I'm trying to figure out like what signs work the best. Is it the sad and the somber? Is it the, the serious? Is it the funny? What do people respond to? Well, I had a Santa Claus suit. 
And I decided that I was going to go down to the French Quarter down there on Bourbon Street in New Orleans and that I was going to try and panhandle as Santa Claus. But with me, I brought a sign that said, Need Money for Hoes. <laughs> I got a lot of laughs, a lot of people took pictures, but within a short period of time, I didn't make a whole lot of money. But I did notice that while I was down there, there was a massive homeless population. The need down there was very, very big. It seemed like every 20 or 30 feet, there was somebody that was homeless, that was bagging for money, bagging for food, change, whatever that they could get. And so there was definitely a need. Cheers, brother. Oh, I'm good, my man. That's a good sign. He drinks milk. He drinks milk. Milk and cookies. Milk and cookies, buddy. Milk and cookies. He's on the clock. I'm on the clock. Milk and cookies on. <laughs> Trying to panhandle in the Santa suit with a funny sign, it didn't really go very far. I didn't make much money that day, but what I did make, I gave away to a homeless lady and her dog. So after I left Louisiana, I went north into Mississippi. Now, that experience that I had with that state patrol officer really left a sour taste in my mouth, and I was really afraid to get back on the horse and continue to panhandle. But I know that in order for me to keep going, I gotta do it. So. As I made my way into Jackson, uh, Mississippi, I found a truck stop there that I was gonna try and panhandle. Within a short period of time, I was able to get some gas and a few bucks. And right as I was finishing up, I had a city code enforcement officer pull up to me and said, hey man, you can't be doing that here. I gotta shut you down. He was actually pretty cool about it. He uh, didn't give me any trouble, just told me that I needed to stop, and I did. Those types of interactions, or that interaction was the type of interaction that that I expected to have more often than not. I respected him, he was cool to me, I was cool to him, and so I packed up and I took off. It's awesome, I had this couple pull up to me and they want to put, put some gas in the van. $25 in the van, it's pretty awesome. My expectations have been beat every day, but then I've also been beat down by just several instances of things that have happened. Now, I left Memphis and I went over to Nashville, and Nashville was just beautiful. Like, it was a very beautiful city. It was very up and coming. While I was in Nashville, I noticed that there was just a, a ton of people in town. There were definitely tourists, and I was going to try and capitalize by holding a funny sign. So, because it was a Tuesday, I pulled out a sign that said, uh, Need money for Taco Tuesday. Now, I got a lot of people that walked by me that kind of smiled and they, they pointed, people that were taking pictures, but nobody really wanted to give. It really seemed like people were just more occupied with other things. I don't think I really made any money at all. Uh, from Nashville, I went on down to Chattanooga. And when I was in Chattanooga, I was doing some filming with my drone just flying around and the security officer approached me and I thought, man, here I am, I'm all dirty, I'm flying a drone in an area that just might not be <laughs> okay to fly. And I thought he was gonna ask me to leave, but he started asking me questions about my drone and about what I was doing and I told him about my story. I told him about the project and about the documentary and about human kindness. And he was inspired. He goes, you know, I don't have a whole lot on me. I'm, I'm just a security officer. I don't make a whole lot, but I want to give you what I have in my pocket. It was a couple of bucks, but it was awesome. It was awesome to see that he really wanted to help see this project go forward. I made my way on down to Atlanta. And when I was in Atlanta, I noticed that there wasn't any homeless people that were panhandling in the downtown area. There was a lot of them that were down by the Centennial Park. So I hopped online and I did a little bit of research and I found that down in that area, it definitely was illegal. If other homeless people aren't doing it, probably not a good idea to do it because that's a good indicator to me that they've been busted before, that maybe they've been harassed. I wasn't even gonna take the risk. So I decided that I was gonna walk around the park and maybe try and meet some people and talk to them. One gal, when I pulled up, I noticed that she was eating just a, a dry package of, uh, of top ramen noodles. You know, they weren't even cooked. She was just eating the noodles. And she didn't have anything. So what I did is I went back to my van 
and I gathered some food and some snacks for her, some stuff that would be easy for her to open and be able to consume, and I was able to help her out with a meal. It wasn't a whole lot, but it definitely was going to be enough to get her through at least that day, so that hopefully she could find something else for, for the next day. Now from there I walked around and I found this other homeless man there and I approached him and as I did I saw that he was ripping the lids off of garbage cans and he was digging for food, digging for scraps, whatever he could get he was putting in a little cup and that's what he was going to eat. I had a little bit of change on me so I gave him everything that I did have and when I was trying to talk to him I could tell that he had some sort of mental condition going on. We weren't going to have a good productive conversation. But the thing that struck me the most about this man was his hair. His hair was just like a giant mat of just grease and it looked like feces was stuffed in there. It was just sad. It was unbelievable. Like this man has definitely fallen through the cracks. I really wish I could have done more for that guy. So from Atlanta, I went down to Montgomery, Alabama, and I really wanted to see you know, just the history of things down there. <laughs> Prior to leaving, I was told and made to believe that when I got into areas that uh, I was gonna be the minority, that I would not do a good job, that I would not be helped out. And I can tell you right now that that is a lie. That is a straight up lie. I've had so many people that are not like me, that are not white, like me, help me out fill up my gas tank, give me money. I mean, it's it, it was unbelievable. I had this couple, they asked me if they could fill up my gas tank for me, and then they prayed with me. I thought that was pretty awesome. It was an African-American couple, you know? They did that for me. And it, it just humbled me so much. It humbled me so much. It was beautiful to see and to be the recipient of people giving. From uh, Montgomery, Alabama, I made my way down into uh, down into Florida. How much is this highway robbery fee? Uh, charge 325. 325? What a deal! Yeah. We take foreign currency, right? Pesos? No, unfortunately we don't. Just Alright, here's 325 for the Florida magistrate. Right. Tell him <laughs> to spend it wisely. As I made my way through Florida, I went into Tallahassee, then down into Gainesville, and then I made my way to this little city called Ocala. And while I was in Ocala, I had a police officer approach me. Somebody had driven by and had seen me out there panhandling and didn't like the fact that I was doing that, and so they decided to report it. And the police officer came and he told me, you know, normally we just leave panhandlers alone. We don't say anything, we don't do anything until there's a complaint, then at that point we, we've got to step in and we got to break it up, you know. He goes, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna arrest you, I'm not gonna write you a ticket, I just usually issue a warning. But as I began to talk to him, he said, you know, you see that spot right over there? It's about 100 feet away, and I said, yeah. He said, just last week there was a homicide right over there, and while we were doing the investigation, the suspect actually came out of the woods and started firing rounds at the, at, at the police officers. And they said they had returned fire and they, you know, took the guy out. He told me that just recently, within the last year, in that same area, same corner, there were two panhandlers that were fighting over a corner and one pulled out a gun and shot the other guy. And so Ocala is, it's a small town, but he told me it's a very rough town. And he said, you know, I would just be very, very careful out there. He wished me the best of luck and I went about my way. Now, I had panhandled for about two hours and I made like three bucks. I was just like super, super discouraged for the day. And I, I really wanted to give up, but I drove on down further and I decided I'm gonna try it one more time. And so I went out there and I began to panhandle again. And within a very short amount of time, this little old lady pulls up and she goes, honey, do you really need money for gas? And I said, yes, dear, I do. And she goes, well, let me give you this. You're probably gonna need some money for food too. She hands me a $50 bill. I mean, it totally turned my day around. I went from being really desperate, only making a couple dollars in a few hours, 
hearing the doom and gloom story of people being murdered that were panhandling to all of a sudden getting exactly what I needed and within a very short period of time I had a few more dollars so I ended up making seventy six dollars on the day it was just unbelievable from there I drove down to uh, Tampa and St. Petersburg St. Petersburg the beaches were just beautiful they were unbelievable the view was amazing beautiful white sanded beaches and it was just awesome it was an awesome ending to a day that just taught me that don't ever give up because you're gonna get what you need. I got what I needed financially for the day, but then on top of that, I got what I needed spiritually. And watching that sunset there, man, it was breathtaking. It was unbelievably beautiful. Now later that night, I stayed at a Walmart in Pinellas Park. And I set up for the night and I noticed that there were other travelers that were setting up for the night as well and getting ready to call it a night. And I went to sleep. Several hours later, about 5 in the morning, I have people starting to beat on the side of my van and shining lights in there. Now, nobody is telling me who they are. I'm not aware of who it is. I don't know if it's the police or a guy that's trying to rob me. I have no idea, you know, so I'm, I'm on high alert here. I open the door and there's a couple officers there. As a matter of fact, there's actually a total of four squad cars that are there in this Walmart parking lot that are waking up travelers telling them that they can't stay there. Now, this Walmart in particular did not have any posted signs saying no overnight parking. And later that day when I had called... Hi, I was wondering if uh, you guys let travelers park in your lot overnight and leave in the morning? The county doesn't allow it. It's, it's not Walmart, but the county. Walmart typically welcomes people to stay that are that are traveling. You can stay overnight as long as you're respectful. You're not causing a problem. However, Pinellas Park Police Department decided that they were going to go around and enforce a city code or actually a county code waking up travelers, you know, people that weren't causing a problem. They weren't out being rude, they weren't uh, making messes, nothing to that liking. I mean, there, people were literally sleeping, you know? It was very discouraging because it showed me that if you were homeless and living in a vehicle, that it is a challenge to find a safe place to rest every night, you know? It becomes a really scary thing. You just don't know. You don't know if you're gonna be attacked. You don't know if the police are gonna harass you and push you out of there. Even if you're being quiet and respectful, parked in the back lot of businesses that welcome you to stay there, it's still a very, very, very unnerving thing. One night while I was sleeping in my van, I woke up in the early morning to just ants covered all over me, biting the shit out of my body, and all infested in my van. I thought my van was pretty well sealed up. It wasn't. There was a hole somewhere and in the middle of the night, hundreds of them came in and began to look for whatever they could find and bite the shit out of me. Because of instances like that, I realized that one of the biggest things that we can do that is super cheap is to help provide some sort of barrier or shelter for folks that are homeless to get out of the elements and to get away from the bugs and all the icky crap that wants to bite you and sting you each and every day. So. I decided that I was going to reach out on social media and I was going to ask people that are following the project, hey, would you be willing to partner with me in trying to raise money to purchase as many tents as we possibly can? I did some research and I found tents on sale for $15. So with that money, I was able to put it to good use and purchase these tents. And I'm going to pick them up in a very short time and I'm going to start handing them out because it's such a simple thing. We don't think about that, you know. We all have our homes that provide us shelter and safety and security, uh, but there are people out there that don't even have that, you know. There are people out there that deal with being bitten by bugs each and every night. Like, how much of a pain in the ass would that be if you were trying to sleep and you got bugs crawling all over you? Do you have any medical conditions? I do have a medical condition. I have, uh, this is due to bug bites. That's from bug bites? The other leg is worse. Um, I was oh, in the wow. hospital for two months with this. Oh, wow. Two months, and there's no change. This was a simple way to help try and alleviate that daily struggle that people that are homeless face. Three, two, one. 
He started out on a grand adventure April Fool's Day, and now he's finally made it to Charleston. All right, well, where are you off to next? Uh, from here, I'm going to head to Myrtle Beach. And uh, actually, I, I did a money drive the other day. I panhandled enough money, and I made uh, some money online, so I was able to purchase 18 tents. So I have those waiting there for me. So I'm going to hand out tents to the homeless people over the next week, week and a half in that area. You want a tent? I have a free tent here. It's brand new. Yeah, it's brand new. I'm here in Asheville, North Carolina, and I came across this really neat program called the 12 Baskets Cafe. Now, what they have is a community program where the goal is to bring everybody in the community together for a meal. It doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're poor, if you uh, live off of welfare, or if you're a million dollar businessman. The goal is to get people around a table having a meal. Now, where does this food come from? The program partners with many local restaurants that uh, have extra food at the end of the night, and rather than throw it away, they come pick it up and they bring it down there and they serve it. So it's a food rescue program with the goal of bringing people in the community together to establish conversations and connections. Can you state your name for me? Jennifer Seawright. What do you see as some of the, the biggest problems as far as being homeless? For one thing, people get thrown into one big category. They automatically think that every homeless person is the same and, and no, no two people are the same anywhere. And I just don't like the way that they want to throw everybody into one category and think like a lot of them have the attitude like that all homeless people are worthless and that's not true. I asked her what her pathway to homelessness was. She told me that she became homeless after her home of 30 years was foreclosed on. Now, have you uh, interacted with anybody that's shown you just human kindness? In places like this right here, uh, because a lot of them, they really, their hearts are really in it like Haywood Church over there. Uh, Pastor Brian, he's a really good person. He helps people all he can, and they give clothes. They, they do everything they can, but I think that the homeless situation is getting out of hand in this country. It's like we are degressing yeah. as, as people. Mark. Are you homeless? Um, right now, I I am not homeless. I've I've got an apartment through the VA HUD Bash program. Awesome. I was homeless for five years until I came to Nashville. Wow. So, where are you originally from, Mark? I originated in in Wilmington. It's where my family is. Okay. Um, I I moved to Raleigh from there and joined the military in Raleigh. How old were you when you joined the military? Uh, twenty one. Twenty one. Okay. Yes. Can you tell me about your experience while you were in the military? I sure would. I would be glad to. Uh, I joined the military. My father, my brother, my family in the military. I went in to serve God and country. Uh, what happened to me is probably the oddest, strangest, uh, saddest, uh, disgusting thing that could probably happen to any man, period. And I've just recently been able to talk about it. I held, I held this in, inside for most of my life until therapy, uh, the VA here, and um, some psychologists have, have helped me tremendously to where I could speak about it and uh, hopefully help somebody else from this experience. I was sexually assaulted when, after I got through basic training, um, did my AIT, and I went to, to Germany. Um, to do 18 months there. When I got there, one of my sergeants, an alcoholic, very um, angry, obnoxious, just a really mean and sick individual, came up to my room uh, after I was there for about three days, came in my room, went straight for me. It's, it's hard for me to say, to tell you this, it's he forced me to have sex wow. and uh, commanded me to uh, to uh, do oral sex on this this man threatening me with uh, uh, with the fact that he was a sergeant I was a private nobody would believe me he would make my life miserable so 
not only did he force me to do oral sex, he also um, he also raped me. And as a 21 year old, not really knowing what was going on in life, this totally changed everything in my life. How old are you now? Right now, I'm 53. Okay, so this was about 32 years ago. Absolutely. Wow. What did that do to you psychologically? Oh my God, well, number one, it, it affected all my relationships from there on. Yeah. Uh, my relationships with women, um, uh, my relationships with other people, my relationships with other men. Um, it was embarrassing, I felt guilty, I felt ashamed, I felt like it was my fault, I felt that that I was in a position that I had no control over. So I had to carry this guilt and shame for all those years. Yeah, absolutely. That's until exactly. I came here to Asheville, uh -huh. got in with, with some good doctors and some good therapists Great. to bring it out of me, to help me through this process. Right now I'm shaking, mm -hmm. but I'm proud of myself for being able to come through this. Good. Ultimately, it caused me alcoholism, drug addiction, homelessness, um, uh, personality disorder, uh, antisocial behavior yeah. for my whole life. And so I walked the streets for about five years, heard about the VA here in Asheville, got a bus ticket, came, and I will say this VA is number one in the country. Amazing. Took me in, scooped me up, got me rehabbed, got me in an apartment, Great. and I'm seeing a counselor. Every week I go to groups, three times a week. Yeah. Now, have, have you been on the streets, when you were living on the streets, mm -hmm. Did you see any any acts of human kindness? Was there any kind things? Oh my God! Out? Yes, there are angels out there. There are angels that come when you are desperate, when you're down. The whole time I had gratitude. When I believe it or not, when I was on the street, everything—a cup of coffee, a cup of hot chocolate, a place to stay—I had gratitude. I can remember one time being up in Virginia, nowhere to go. It was raining. My shoes were soaked. I had nothing. It was freezing cold. A man out of nowhere saw me, gave me a $20 bill, wow. said, I'll take you anywhere you need to go. I'll buy you anything you want. Um, I'm going to get you out of this position. I didn't even have, I didn't even ask for that. Wow. And that's just one. I can name many, many more acts of total kindness. Um, there's still a lot of good people out there in the world. And, mm. you know, it's, it's until you've been there, you don't know. My biggest fear in my life was becoming homeless. Uh -huh. So I faced that fear and I've gotten through it and I've come out on the other side. Now hopefully my life will become full circle yeah. and that I'll be able to help someone that has been through some similar situations. That's my goal in life is to help another individual. Awesome. Hey y'all, my name's Prophet. I'm in Greensboro. I'm fixing to do this song for y'all called The Bridge. Y'all check it out. Ready? I do want to make a difference. That's what I came for. Check this. My home is under a bridge in a tent on a ledge with a pit for bacon and eggs. But my story don't end under a bridge. Pants and dangling my different, legs over dividends. This is not how it ends. I'm in a tent right now with a pen and a pad and some know-how to know how to spit a dung pile a quarter mile of the snow plow cause I go wild but somehow my flow's compiling a style that's undeniable ten miles high than the mightiest fighter with insight that bends light and tighten your pins tight so you can fight and do mighty strikes at the plights of life the pen is mightier than any knife and faster than a lightning strike so master your life we can do this right aye. My home is under a bridge in a tent on a ledge with a pit for bacon and eggs. But my story don't end under a bridge. Pinned in, dangling my legs over dividends. This is not how it ends. This is not how it ends. Where do you stand, man? Right across from the, the shelter, there's a railroad track. Uh -huh. And if you go down the track a little ways, you have a tent down there's, there? there's woods up on the right. And I have a tent down there. It's real secluded. What do you do for uh, money? Is it is it your music? My music. I walk around and sing for people, rap for people, and tell tell my story and tell about God and do everything I can to make a difference. Excellent. Now, 
on average, like each day, about how much do you think you make? I try to make at least twenty dollars a day okay. because they do feed three meals a day around here. Greensboro's great about that. Yeah. But I'm a skinny guy and I've got a very high metabolism, mm -hmm. and I wind up walking about fifty miles a day. Wow. So if I'm walking that much, then it's really hard to keep that much protein. I've lost 65 pounds. I just ate lunch over at the Greensboro Urban Ministries. So did I. You, 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 had, you had lunch there today? Yes, sir. How often do you go use that program? I do that every day. I thought it was a wonderful meal. It's a great meal. Yeah. I appreciate everything they give. But like I said, you can see I'm a skinny guy. Yeah. And I can eat all day long and still never gain a pound. I'm the complete opposite of that. Have you ever seen like any acts of human kindness out here? Many. I'm gonna tell you right now. I can walk up to somebody out here that's driving a Lamborghini. They wouldn't spit on me if I was on fire. But I can walk up to that man holding a sign on the corner and tell him I'm hungry and he'll give me his only dollar. Wow. Every time. That's incredible. Every time. And they can walk up to me when I ain't got but a dollar and I'll give it to them. Uh -huh. Anytime. Would you say that there's like a sense of community amongst the homeless community? Absolutely, they take care of each other. Good. They do what everybody's supposed to be doing. You know, the Bible says the last will be first. Uh -huh. They're blessed. When we get where we're going, they're gonna be on top and the people running around in suits and ties is gonna be on the bottom looking up. Yeah. Um, can you think of anything like in, in a closing, maybe an experience that, that, that uh, you've had that should be shared? I mean, I see it every single day. I can sit right here in this chair and I can say, God, I'm hungry, but I don't feel like asking nobody because people are being mean to me. Will you please bring me some food? And it wouldn't take five minutes and somebody walk over here and hand me something to eat just out of nowhere. Wow. Every time. Well, I'm going to fill your bag up today. I appreciate it, brother. And I sure will take that. And, and I'll probably I'll share it. Good. And I'll eat it myself. Excellent. I was in Washington, D.C. And while I was in Washington, D.C., I noticed down at the mall area that there wasn't a whole lot of homeless people. I saw a couple. I did approach a lady. I wanted to interview her and she just didn't want to have anything to do with my camera. I didn't meet anybody there that I could interview or, or uh, talk to so I just moved on. Uh, from there I made my way actually at a roundabout way to Baltimore then up north. I went to Wilmington, Delaware from there and when I was in Wilmington I needed to go to a soup kitchen so that I could catch a meal. And I gotta tell you, that was one of the roughest areas that I've ever been to. I stood outside and I literally listened to people make drug deals. It was just a really, really rough area. And actually, the day after I had eaten there, I had found out that some guy uh, was in that exact same spot, in that exact same area, walking around with a gun shooting people. That is really scary. From uh, Wilmington, Delaware, I actually made my way to Philadelphia. And Philadelphia showed me some of the most crazy and aggressive panhandlers that I've ever seen. I saw guys that were standing in the middle of the road as cars are flying by them 40, 50 miles an hour. They're like splitting traffic, waving down cars, trying to get them to stop, trying to get some money. I mean, that was extreme. That was a bit of panhandling that I had not seen. It was just unbelievable to see these guys literally risk their lives in order just to make a couple of bucks. From Philadelphia, I made my way on down to Atlantic City. Now, while I was in Atlantic City, I went to this Salvation Army soup kitchen down there. But before I went to the soup kitchen, I wanted to try and utilize their food bank. So I went in and I, I started to do the paperwork and the lady saw that I had an out of state ID. She told me because I was homeless in the state of New Jersey, I could not get food from the food bank. I mean, the food's just sitting on the shelf there. You know, food has an expiration date. It's got to move along and move out to help somebody. And I was just blown away that I was unable to obtain the resources. She did tell me that, oh, well, we do have a soup kitchen that you can eat at. So I did go and I had lunch there and it was nice. After I left Atlantic City, I made my way up to Tom's River, New Jersey. And while I was in Tom's River, I found this program there. It was an incredible program. It's called the John Bon Jovi Soul Kitchen. Hey guys, Jason's Most Excellent Van Adventures coming to you from Tom's River, New Jersey. I'm standing outside the John Bon Jovi Soul Kitchen where I just enjoyed a wonderful three course meal. Now you're probably asking yourself, how is Jason affording the ability to go and have a three course meal? I mean, that sounds pretty damn fancy. Well, what it comes down to is this is a program 
that is completely different than anything else that I've seen thus far. It's basically a community kitchen where people can come and sit down and have a meal and it's via donation. But then if you can't afford that, they allow you to work for them. I went in there today and I said, hey, I don't have any money. I would love to volunteer. They sat me down. I had an incredible meal. I had iced tea. I had a sweet potato and leek soup. I had grilled chicken that was wrapped in grilled apples and Brussels sprouts and potatoes. I mean, it was just a beautiful meal to top it off with a brownie and some ice cream. From there, it was time to go to work. I was asked to go outside and just do a little bit of sweeping, but you know what? I took it a little bit above and beyond. I decided that I was going to also do the parking lot, picking up all the trash, and also picking up all the trash that's in the uh, greenery here. From Tom's River, New Jersey, I made my way into New York. I went into Staten Island, and I got to tell you, I was blown away, okay? The toll price to go into Staten Island was $15. $15. I mean, that really <laughs> took a big dent out of what I had. Okay, so I came into Staten Island, and it is just pouring down rain. It is cloudy, overcast. It's just terrible weather outside, okay? I make my way through Staten Island, then into Brooklyn. I go over the Brooklyn Bridge and down into New York. And my original intention and plan was to find a place to park somewhere in the downtown area, get out and do some panhandling. But it was so wall-to-wall, -wall, and the cheapest parking that I found was like $50. And I did not have $50 to be able to pay in order to park, in order to get out for a little while to go do some filming and panhandling. Fortunately, I had enough money to where I was able to work my way through New York. After I made my way through New York, I came on out and went to uh, Hartford, Connecticut. From Hartford, Connecticut, I made my way towards Rhode Island. Prior to getting to Rhode Island, we're outside panhandling, trying to make some money. And police came. Police came and stopped me. And I got to tell you, that officer was super aggressive. In their days to read or take notice, and that has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. You're so worried about gas money, you're drinking soda and you got all kind of appliances on your van. Hey, this is my home. Yeah, Please good. get out of my home. Get out. Give me an ID. Hey guys, I'm Facebook Live. I got a police officer here with me. Got the registration for me. Uh, that has nothing to do with anything? Yes, it does. What does it have to do with anything? Because I'm asking for it. I know, but the van, he was out here panhandling. Exactly, I, he's I, panhandling, which is illegal. And I'm asking for the registration of the van. Okay, okay. Yeah. so state of Connecticut says you will produce one. Okay. okay, and that's why I'm asking you for one. Okay, okay. Let's relax. I am relaxed, but I'll ask the questions you answer. Okay. Fair enough? Yeah. Don't worry, the camera's already rolling for you. So is mine, sir. All right, we'll keep this thing Put going. The camera's down so we can talk now. All right, I'm going to talk to you. Very good. Here's your license back, here's your registration back. Is your ID back? Go ahead and pack up your cooler. Okay. Walmart doesn't want you here. They don't want you paying hand. Okay. okay. It's their property. Sure. They're in control of their property. Can I give you that? All right. You guys are all you set. You can to follow go. my documentary on no, panhandling. I'm, I'm all set. I'm filming I'm a documentary set. about yeah. human kindness, okay. sir. So you're you're all set. Okay. Go ahead. Pack the cooler up in the van, and you can go ahead and head right. out. Okay. You have a great day. Thank you. Super super aggressive. Not very nice, and it just really put a, put a damper on my whole attitude and outlook for the next couple of days. From there, I made my way to Plymouth, Massachusetts, and then right on up to Boston. Boston is beautiful. Very wide open roads, very clean city. I would love to go back to Boston someday. It was just an incredible town. From there, I made my way north up to Manchester, New Hampshire, where a guy that follows along the page, actually, he offered me a place to stay for the night. And so when I was in Manchester, I parked my van and I, I camped out for the night. It was a nice break because most of the times, you know, I'm staying in Walmart parking lots. Most of the times I'm staying in truck stops and it can be really, really loud and uncomfortable. It was nice to be able to get into an area where I can kind of put my feet up and relax just for the evening. From there, I made my way to Portland, Maine and then to Bangor, Maine. When I was in Bangor, Maine, I went to a soup kitchen there. It was actually a Salvation Army. The folks that were working there were really, really nice people, but the food, oh man, it was the roughest that I've had so far. And you know, the old saying, beggars can't be choosers, that, that does stand true. I definitely left full, that is a fact. 
But uh, the meal that I had that day was not that great. From Bangor, Maine, I made my way to Burlington, Vermont. And the drive from Maine to Vermont is just beautiful. It is incredible. Beautiful, lush, green, green, green hills, green trees, super green, and just incredible views. From Burlington, I made my way to Syracuse, New York. And uh, while I was in Syracuse, I went to another soup kitchen there. It was lovely, it was a really good meal. From Syracuse, I made my way to Niagara Falls. And I gotta tell you, you know, if you're ever in the area, you gotta check out Niagara Falls. It is just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful area. And it's free, it's free to go check out. From there, I popped down to Buffalo and then made my way towards Erie, Pennsylvania, where I stopped at another soup kitchen and I had another meal, it was pretty darn good. From uh, there, I made my way on down to uh, on down to Canton, Ohio. I was really fortunate, actually. When, when I was in Canton, I was in a parking lot, and these two guys came up to my van, and they were asking me questions about the van. I told them about my project, about what I'm doing, and they invited me over to their home where they filled up the van with a bunch of food. So I had uh, plenty of food to eat over a couple day period. Thank you. From Canton, I made my way, my way to Pittsburgh, and I went to another soup kitchen there. And while I was at the, in that soup kitchen area, it was in a rough area. It was in a rough area of Pittsburgh. Um, man, I don't think I'd want to be out there at nighttime. That is for sure. But I went in, and they had a really nice meal program. You got fed very, very well. There was food that you could take to go with you. I mean, it was really, really nice and incredible. From Pittsburgh, I made my way to Columbus, Ohio, where I again went to another soup kitchen. It's called the Community Kitchen. They put on another great meal. It was another great meal where I definitely left full, uh, not hungry at all. But that's kind of when things started to turn up, started to get a little bit better. Uh, doing some panhandling, I, I've been able to make more in the last couple days than I have in the last week, which uh, for me has been awesome compared to what I had been making prior to that you know it was it was really probably a low point but things were turning around and so right now you know 10 weeks on the road another 10 more plus to go um, I'm really missing being home seeing my wife seeing my animals being in my own bed it is rough each and every day to kind of uh, try and find a place to sleep at night that's safe I mean here, I'm in this Walmart parking lot, and it's a nice Walmart parking lot. It seems fairly quiet, but man, when it gets dark, things get different. And so, uh, so far, so good, but man, this is not something that I want to do forever. Now, Bo. Can you tell me just a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, um, I got hurt when I was 22. Uh, I fell a tree, it paralyzed me. I broke my back. And then when I was like uh, 26, 28, I got a bone infection in my right hip. And it uh, started spreading to my pelvis. So I had to get my legs cut off. And then. I moved up here with my with my mom and my grandparents, and then my grandparents passed away, and my mom sold the house last year. What kind of uh, services do you receive? Uh, you know, I get disability, but I also have a mother, too, that I help take care of. That check is not really that big to me. You don't go too far. How often do you come out here and panhandle? I do this every day every day and for about how long each day uh sometimes a couple hours sometimes 45 minutes to an hour are people usually pretty generous uh sometimes okay i got lucky here yesterday as soon as i got here a man pulled up that helps me out sometimes and uh he gave me 70 dollars wow and i left i was done wow. for the day thank you god bless you have a good day bro did you say the people are pretty kind to you? Uh, yeah, but like I was telling you before you uh, started videotaping, doing this right here, mm -hmm. you see how much, how 
much greed is still in the world. Also, how much many good people are still in the world. Yeah. I grew up in the streets. Yeah. I'm originally from Odom County in Louisville. So really Lexington to me, there ain't no words in Lexington. I've lived up here 17 years. There ain't a neighborhood I can't go through without worrying about somebody bothering me. Nobody's gonna bother me up here. Is it is it pretty rough in those areas? Yeah. Have you ever experienced any problems out there? Uh yeah. Oh. Uh, this is gonna sound crazy. He was actually a friend of mine. But uh, he robbed me at gunpoint last winter. Really? Yeah. The winter before that, I had a guy come in my house that I thought was a friend of mine, put a pistol in the back of my head and robbed me. Jesus. Before my mom lost her house. Uh-huh. But yeah, so it's, it's real out here. You ever go to, a, to like a, a soup kitchen or a shelter or anything like that? Uh-uh. No because they're dirty and they're nasty up here in this thing. And you, that's where all the drunks and druggies go. Yeah. Besides but I'm your... not saying that about everybody that goes to them, but mm -hmm. they have, like last, back in the winter, I had to stay a couple nights, two or three nights at the Catholic Action Center because it, it got so cold out. Yeah. The struggle is real and it's everywhere, it's even in Kentucky. Today. Everybody that's out here doing the same struggle, keep your head up. Awesome. Thank you. Stay positive. All right, so I'm going to help Bo out a little bit. I don't have a whole bunch myself, but I do got five bucks cash, so I'm going to give him five bucks for uh, hanging out with me and talking with me for a few minutes. Uh, seems like Bo lives a pretty rough life. I mean, he was paralyzed, he got an infection in his hips had to have an amputation. I mean, he's got no legs, nothing. But he comes out here almost every day for an hour or two, maybe three, until he makes enough money that he can support himself and take care of his mom. So I'm gonna help him out a little bit. It has been really hot the last couple of days and just trying to deal with the heat and stay hydrated, it is a chore. It is a chore. I've been trying, trying all day to, uh, get inside as often as I can you know go into a grocery store or something like that or or maybe a coffee shop or something just to get out of the heat but you know my my appearance it's definitely changing my my beards getting bigger my hair's getting a little more wild my clothes are starting to not look as nice and I just feel like when I go into these businesses and whatnot now that I'm kind of being looked at in a different light than what I would have maybe a month ago maybe when I first started you know last night I was sleeping in the van and just dripping sweat I had the windows down pretty good I've got a little fan in there that I run but it just wasn't enough Oh, it just sucks the life out of you. It just sucks the life out of you. I am now 84 days into being homeless, and I can't believe it. I'm almost over 11,000 miles traveled. The last several days have been have been great. It's been a relief from the weather. However, it went to the opposite end of the spectrum. It was super, super hot for about four days uh, in the 90s during the day, 95 during the day, 80, 90% humidity. And then at nighttime, it would barely get below 80 degrees at night. 
And that's hard. That's really hard to sleep once the once the temperature does not drop down like that. A couple days ago, the weather finally broke. We had these big monsoon type storms just roll in here and that was nice. It was nice to have the weather drop down into the 70s during the day. However, my van still has some areas where it leaks and uh, it got a lot of things wet in here. It really did. But yesterday I was in Chicago and while I was in Chicago I did a little bit of panhandling but I noticed that, you know, in the downtown areas of these really big cities, you don't really see a whole, a whole lot of homeless folks. It seems like, like those folks are just kind of driven out. They're not, they're not there. It seems like the police maybe push them out. But once I got in the outskirts of Chicago, I found that there was a good number of homeless folks that were out there panhandling. There was a lady who had a sign that said that she was a mother of three, I believe and was trying to do whatever she could do in order to take care of them and, and maintain a home. And uh, this lady was literally splitting lanes in, in traffic. The light would turn red and it would be a double lane road. She'd walk out and walk right up the middle of the cars, just panhandling, trying to make money. I haven't seen that since I was in Philadelphia. And most of the times it's guys doing it, but this was the first time I had seen a lady doing it. Um, I didn't have any cash, otherwise I would have helped her out, but uh, it's such a quick interaction. If you don't have stuff ready to hand out, you might not be able to help somebody. When I was in Chicago, the weather was just, it was nasty. It was overcast, it was rainy. I was really bummed because when I was in New York, it was the same thing. I wanted to get out and do more, but when it's pouring down rain, you know, you've got camera equipment that you got to try and keep protected, and so you, you don't really have the opportunity to do that. All right, I'm in uh, downtown Milwaukee. I've rolled over almost 11,000 miles so far. Um, I'm going to go down to the area where the Bronze Fonz is, right in the downtown area, trying to do a little bit of panhandling. Now, I haven't seen any homeless people down there. I have seen a pretty heavy police presence, so I'm going to try and be as discreet as I can. I got a smaller sign today, but when you are in Rome, you should do as the Romans do. Milwaukee is known for drinking, so... This is going to be today's sign. I'm going to hold it up for just short durations uh, when there's no police looking and uh, we'll see if I can make a few bucks today. Does it work? It hasn't worked yet. <laughs> So, how long have you been homeless? Um, since last July. Last July? Okay. Where do you try and stay at night? Uh, well, I, I saved up enough money, I got a tent in the woods. Okay. Uh, it took me, I don't know, about two weeks once I really started saving to get everything that I needed. Okay. For that. Um, night I got a little styrofoam thing to sleep on um it's like styrofoam bedding stuff and then a uh, sleeping bag so when you're out here panhandling how do people treat you some people treat me good some people feel sorry for me and some people are just really mean can you talk about maybe an experience where somebody was not so nice to you the guy this morning he um, he pulled out his wallet and he opened it and was looking through it and he acted like he was pulling something out and he went like this to me. Oh jeez. So. Imagine that probably does not feel very good. No it doesn't. Hi. Hi. 
Thank you guys. Yeah. Yep. That is pretty awesome. Yeah. Madison, Wisconsin. Madison uh, has the University of Wisconsin, the Badgers. Milwaukee has the Bucks, so I figured I would do a little play on words today. Hate the Badger, yeah. can I get a buck? We'll see if that works. I've been out here for about maybe 10 minutes, and I've had a, one person yell at me to get a job. I haven't heard that one in a while. But this seems like kind of a pretty intimidating spot to be because you're splitting traffic, you know? I really don't like these kinds of spots, but I need to try because I haven't panhandled in, in a while. And I, I need to make a few bucks today. Thank you, ma'am. Sure, I had anything. Oh, left. perfect. There Thank you, you dear. Go. You have a great week. Awesome. A couple of dollars. kindness I think about giving I don't think about taking I think about giving giving kindness all these travelers all these people the best thing I can do is say hello and make them smile if I can do that right there it it, 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 it makes my day it's my day's beautiful man when I can make people smile all day the idea is when you're fundraising you know that you you want to be giving something and um, what I'm giving is no lies no hard luck story I'm not a victim by any means you know this is my life I'm a traveling soul and what I would like to do is show you my sign how long have you been traveling my whole life I think since I started when I was 12 I, I did some time in the army you know I got a discharge you know a preferable discharge an honorable discharge and uh, um, I worked in the carnival for years. It's something that's been in my blood for since I was 12. You know, I've, I've gotten to a point now where I don't try to make excuses for it. I say, you know, this is my life. This is who I am, you know, and I've been out here my whole life. So the many times I've traveled, I found the best mode of travel for me uh, in terms of uh, my ability to uh, uh, tell my stories and make people smile is on a bicycle. Wow. You know? And I've traveled many thousands of miles on a bicycle. I want to show you uh, the greatest thing I lost. You know, I mean, I've lost my mother. That was great. You know, but my way of life, right, somehow struck me as even more important than losing my mother. You know, if I lost, if you lost everything in the world, right, that you've built, you know and lost everything all the way down to the toothbrush. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, you would be faced with hourly uh, loss. Where's my toothbrush? Oh, I don't have a toothbrush. You know, where's my snippers? Oh, I don't have any snippers. Where's my laptop? I don't have a laptop. Where's my bike, right? Where's everything? It's all gone. You gotta start over. There's many, many people out here to face this all the time. They, they, they have things, they build things up, and then they lose them because somebody comes along and takes them, you know? And, uh, you know, there's no safety net out here. Yeah. You know, there isn't. You've been robbed before out here? Oh, many, many times. Yeah, many times. This was my rig. Oh, wow. Yeah, and this is how I traveled. That's a beautiful bike. Yeah. How long did you travel on that for? I traveled on that for a few years. Wow. And then one day, uh, it was gone. How many miles do you think you put on there? Oh, I put at least 30,000 miles. Wow. Yeah. And somebody just stole it from you. Yeah. Well, John, you've helped me out big time today with some of your thoughts and perspectives. Thank you, man. I'd like to give you half of the money that I made today and some food if you'd like. Thanks, man. But it's not necessary, believe me. No, no. 
Yeah. I want to because you had talked about That's it earlier. That's some wafers, man. <laughs> <laughs> These are great, mm. man. Vanilla wafers, man. I didn't make a whole lot, but here's here's six bucks. Hey, man. Thank you, brother. I can use this. Yeah. And then let's uh, grab some food. Take whatever you want out of there. I've got plenty, so you can take you know, as much as you I want. I can't carry a lot, man. That's the other thing, man, you know, is, you know, I'm not a hoarder. Um, I have to carry this stuff, so. Um, I don't know. It's good. I think I'll do this right here, man. You want a couple bottles of water, too? No, I'm good on water. You good? Yeah. John, thank you so much, man. Yeah. I wish you well. Maybe I'll see you in uh, Sioux Falls in a week or so. Yep. Yeah. So about a week and a half ago, I ran into John, and through talking to John, John really dropped some knowledge on me. He shared with me um, some new philosophies that I decided that I'm going to take forward uh, when I'm trying to panhandle and raise funds, and I was very successful. The very first time that I, that I tried to make money the way that he had suggested to me, I made like $81 in an hour. It was incredible. Well, I stayed in contact with John over about the next week and a half. Our, our travels had separated us, but I knew that at some point we would kind of be crossing paths again. And I just sent John a message. I said, hey, John, I've made it into Rapid City. You got any plans tomorrow? I, I would love to meet up. I would love to hang out with you. He said, man, things are not good right now. Is there any way that we can hang out tonight? Yeah, sure. So he gave me his location. I took the van. I drove over there. And what I saw was a different John. John was able to find work. He found a, a job down at the VFW, went and started to work. But the problem was uh, he had to walk about five miles. He, didn't, he doesn't have a bike, had to walk about five miles, couldn't hitch a ride uh, to go into this place where he was supposed to work for the day. Once he got there, he just had some negative interactions with uh, the guy that was supposed to be his manager and he ended up losing his job. So I put him in the van and we drove several miles down the road to a Walmart for the night. We began to hang out and just have conversation. During that time, he had been talking back and forth with his sister. And his sister, Gina, realizes just how important it is for him to have a bike. Earlier in the day, John was at a pawn shop and found a bike that he really, really wanted that was going to fit his needs. His sister has agreed to purchase that bike for him, but with that, he needs some accessories to set it up. All right, John, so I wanted to tell you, while you were out there raising funds, I went online and I did a Facebook Live video. I talked to my followers. I let them know what's going on with your bike. And I raised, was able to raise $300 for you. Dude, that's awesome, man. So I got $300 that will cash out so far. And there may right. be more that's going to come in. But $300. Yeah, because you know what I mean? The rack, you know, um, oil and lights. Yeah. You gotta have lights, you gotta have oil, yeah. you gotta have a rack. So that's yeah. from that's from my followers to you. Thank you, brother. So and thank you all of you. You guys are very welcome. You got any words of advice, John, or just, just anything that we can share? I just say in general that um, you know it's easy for the corners of your mouth to go down, man, and get get, get stuck there for a while. And uh, you know, whenever you feel those corners going down, smile and wave at somebody. Say hello. You know, I think it's, it's, it's like magic, man. You know, it just it can change your whole day. Awesome. Hey guys, Jason here, coming to you from uh, Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, yesterday we did a, a live feed video and we had raised some funds actually to help my buddy John get a bike. Well, today we went and got that bike and we're gonna just do a little live feed here of uh, everybody watching us putting the bike together. So we've got it going right now. Let's take a look. Got a Trek, Marlin 6. Got a basket. John's putting on the new basket support.
kind of hungry, so I swung into the Montana Rescue Mission uh, there in Billings. When I went inside, I found there was a group of about 40 guys just standing there waiting for the dinner service. And I walked up to a staff member and asked him, you know, if I could have dinner. Uh, he had told me that, yeah, in order for me to do that, I needed to register and do the intake process. I said, that's fine. He then grabbed a pen and paper and started to ask me questions uh, right in front of all these guys. He goes, are you a sex offender? I said, no. He goes, are you sure you're not a registered sex offender? I'm sure I'm not a registered sex offender. All right, well, how many felonies do you have? I don't have any felonies. Are you sure you're not a felon? Yeah, I'm very sure. I looked around the room and I, I saw that all these guys, their eyes were just fixated on me and watching how I was answering these questions. I felt very vulnerable and very uncomfortable in the situation. So I've spent the day here in Seattle and I gotta tell you, I've been coming to this city for many, many, many years. I grew up just south of here and even after moving away to Arizona, I still come back to Seattle a couple times a year and man, the homeless population has exploded here. The acceptance of just open public drug use has exploded here. There's this really pretty park that's over by Pike Place Market. And I remember going there before and it was really clean, really nice. Not anymore. It's dirty. It is extremely dirty and it is loaded full of homeless folks. It's loaded full of folks that are just camped out there. They got their carts there, they got their, their mats there, and they're just camped out there sleeping in the grass. You got folks that are high on whatever drugs just walking around kind of like zombies. And that's sad. You know, it's sad to see that this area has been taken over and ran rampant with the homeless population. But beyond that, it's sad to see that there's more and more people that are facing that, that bit of lifestyle. I really hope that the city can get a, get a hold of it because word gets out. Word gets out that that's what the tourists are going to go and experience and so people don't want to come. Now, I decided today that I was going to try and do a little bit of panhandling in the city, in that park actually. And I set up with the sign today, trying to stand out, because there were other people that I saw that were walking around with their signs or walking around trying to get a little bit of money. Those people were, were being pretty, like, blunt with it, you know. I saw this lady with a sign walk up and basically was, like, sticking it in folks' face, you know, asking for money. So I came up with a sign today that says, uh, uh, <laughs> shitty advice, $1. And I figured that um, I was going to try and stand out amongst the crowd of people and basically be a part of the tourist trap there, you know. I was there for a short period of time. I made a few bucks. And I think actually had I stayed there the entire day, I probably would have made a pretty decent amount. It doesn't seem like you're going to get ran out if you're homeless. It doesn't seem like the police are even... Uh, taking the time of day to even address the issue. It seems like it's more or less accepted now rather than taken care of. I was here in Seattle. I was starting to run a little bit low on funds. My belly was getting a little hungry. I walked by this outdoor patio cafe and I found that these folks had just gotten up and left. What they left behind looked pretty darn good to me. Uh, so I decided to partake in a free meal. So I have now rolled over 15,000 miles of travel and I am now in my hometown where I was born and raised, Centralia, Washington. Now, this town really means a lot to me, you know. All my memories of my childhood are from here. All the sports accomplishments that I've ever had are from here. But one of the things that I've really noticed just driving through town after being gone from this area as a regular resident for the last almost decade the homeless population has exploded. It's unbelievable. How you doing, They're taking man? pictures of everything. I'm a stand. Travel back. It is really unbelievable because, you know, growing up, you might have seen one or two people here or there. Now it's everywhere. It's everywhere. The homeless population is everywhere in this small town. I've been to many small towns throughout the country and, and I gotta tell you, it seems like it's one of the most prevalent here. But not only that, one of the most dangerous things that they have going on here is the drug abuse, is the drug addiction. 
the heroin epidemic has just been out of control here. Just going through this town, it feels like it's just a city full of walking zombies, and it's, it, it's sad. But there's this really nice park that I'm hanging out in right now, and there's a gazebo that I used to play on as a little kid. And I remember coming here during the summer times, and there would be bands up there playing, just music in the park, beautiful thing. Now they have literally gated off the gazebo. You can't even get up on it anymore. Apparently, from what some locals have told me, uh, people go up there and they're just shooting heroin. Shooting heroin and people are, are overdosing up there. And because it's kind of hidden, nobody's finding them. People have died up there. I've been at this park for a very short time. And I gotta tell you, it just doesn't feel safe anymore. It doesn't feel homely anymore. I do. You do? Can I give it to you? I need a tip so bad. I have an extra one. I'll be on the documentary for that. Okay. Let me uh, pull right here quick and I'll give you this tip. Thank you. Yep. I stole everything I own, so. How long ago was that? Last night. I woke up and all my stuff just disappeared. I think oh. the cops took it. Probably. Yeah. I do have an extra tent though I'm going to give you. That would be awesome. How'd you end up on the street here? My mom. Your mom? My mom was homeless. She grew up out here, you know, and she ran away when she was young, and so I started staying with my grandparents when I was three, because I got taken away from her because of her drug use. Okay. And I ran away to see mom. How long have you been out, out on the street? I've been out on the street 13 years, and I'm 23. <laughs> wow, since yeah. you were 10. Yeah. Were you on the street here with your mom? Yeah. Wow, that's rough. Do you have any education, schooling, anything? Sophomore. Sophomore? Wow. So I ed people out here educated me though, you know, like they taught me everything I know. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for the people out here, I don't know where I'd be. Where do you sleep at night? Uh, wherever, wherever people are, you know, I stay in groups a lot. Mm -hmm. It's safer. How uh, kind are people to you? People can be mean, but it, it depends on who you put yourself around, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So my documentary is on human kindness. And I've been living homeless for five months now. Yeah. Traveling the country. That's cool. And I do that from via panhandling. And I try and help other people along the way. That's cool. So I mistakenly turned down this road and I ran upon you. That's cool. <laughs> so I think everything happens for a reason. You needed a tent. Guess what? Thank I got an you. extra tent. I appreciate that. Now, do you have any work history? No. Don't even know how to drive. Don't, okay. So... I see you've got some... Oh, I have a skin disease. Okay. Yeah. That's not from drugs or anything? No, it's not. Um, it's actually, it's from, you know, MRSA. Yep, um, yeah, I do. It's, but I'm, I'm a, on antibiotics. I'm a paramedic, so... So, you know how it... I'm on antibiotics right now. Good, so. good. Is it getting better or helping? It is, actually. It's getting a lot better. I'm not scratching. Uh -huh. and, like, the cream that I've been putting on it, the anti-itch, feels so good. Good. <laughs> so... How would you say people are out here, like the other homeless folks? Are they pretty nice? Are they kind of ruthless? Honestly, that's for you to decide, you know? You, how, how what do you your feel opinion people on them you? is by each individual, I'm not going to say. Absolutely. So. so it's definitely down to the individual. I won't of, categorize people. So. You know what? That's been the biggest revelation that I've had on my trip is that everybody needs to be treated like an individual and not... Not, not like, in some group. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So, I'm going to give you uh, this tent. Thank you. I'm going to give you a backpack. Hell yeah. And I'm going to give you some food. Thank you, I appreciate it. Does that it. work? Yes. All right. It's awesome, thank you. So, there's a tent for you. Thank you so much. Hold on, let me give a shot with that. Yay! Tent. All right, let me grab a backpack. And I'm going to load you up with a bunch of food, too. Thank okay? you. I appreciate that. So here's a whole bunch of food. Thank you. This is all fresh, made a day ago. Thank you. So you got that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, so your all your stuff was taken from you yesterday? Yeah. You think it was by the police? Yeah. Does that happen quite often out here? Oh, every day. These cops come down here and make people move. Every day. Cops are the worst people around, you know? They uh -huh. come and just throw... 
I watched them throw a 90-year-old man's stuff away, 90 years old. Wow. Threw all his belongings away. Mm -hmm. and I watched that grown-ass grown 90-year-old man cry wow. while they were throwing his stuff away. That's got to be hurtful. You know, and nobody would do nothing about it. How, how can somebody do that? So would you say that most of the programs that are out here that help people are more of a Band-Aid than a fix? Yeah. That's kind of my observation, too. Yeah. Because I've gone 15,000 miles. I've been all over the country. They end up back on the street again yeah. after having housing back out here. Mm -hmm. You know? Thank you. All right, be safe out there. And just fair warning with the camera thing, some people might get a little snappy at you. No, I totally so get that. That's just why be I, careful. I asked. <laughs> so, all right, have a good day. You too. Flora told me when she was a teenager that her mom put her on drugs in order to keep her numb. She then would prostitute her out in order to make more money to buy more drugs. All right, so today I am in Eugene, Oregon. And when I was in my hometown of Centralia, a local businessman gave me some Costco gift cards, said, hey, you know, use it how you see fit. Down here in Eugene, there's a massive homeless population. And so today what I decided to do was partner with some friends here and put together some supplies for some care packages. Uh, with that Costco gift cards that I did receive, I went and bought a whole bunch of socks, I bought water, I bought some snacks and food that I'm gonna be able to hand out. And then my friends who actually live here in Eugene uh, were able to get a whole bunch of hygiene supplies. So people are gonna be able to get themselves clean, get a little bit of food and water in them, and then have a brand new fresh pair of socks. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Hey guys, how are you doing today? Why are you ripping them? You gotta cut them first, bro. Quit pulling on that. Oh, Oh, You should put that right there before you pull that again. Let's go under it. Alright, alright, alright. Yeah, no, it's pretty hard to get actually. I made it if you guys have to. Oh goodness, they have a doggy. Oh yay. Okay. Where's the pup? I wanna give her this. Is this okay, Mom? You want to see her? Yeah. Here, okay, I give her some... breezy. What's up, Mom? Oh, yeah. Come here. Come here, sweetheart. Come here, baby. Look. Look. You want to get it? I want to get it. Oh, here. Look at Give her this. Uh, Look. I want to give her a toy. Too. Oh, I want to give her a treat. Oh, try? She does. She's Here's got up. one. She might not eat it. We have some baby stuff. Yeah. That we could donate to you. Yeah, she's pregnant. <laughs> Is there like a contact information maybe? You guys don't uh, have to have a phone or anything yeah, she, like that. Over the last few days, I've noticed a bit of a theme, and that's been generational homelessness. I've met people that are pregnant, living right on the street, and where's that baby going to go once they're born? I've also met folks that were brought into homelessness when they were at a very young age with their parents. Hello. Just fruit snacks. Let's see that line. California. <laughs> you guys are like the fresh fruit Nazis. <laughs> Don't bring it in. Over the last week or so, I've, I've traveled down the West Coast and I've been to several very big cities. I've been through San Francisco where I experienced a, a very diverse culture of homelessness. That was the first that I had seen like that in the entire country. I saw people of all backgrounds there. When I first drove into the city through the Golden Gate Bridge, I, I came off and I turned right and I ended up in a residential type area. And while I was there, I didn't really, I didn't really see any homeless folks, but not from there I made it on down to the Tenderloin District there in San Francisco. San Francisco is, is crazy. There's quite a few homeless folks. It was all over. There was homelessness all over the place. Pretty significant population, very, very prevalent through that area. And that's where I had noticed, you know, kind of my first big taste of the, the cultural diversity 
of the homeless population. You have Chinatown that's right there. I saw Asians that were homeless. I saw Hispanics, African Americans, Caucasians, Native Americans, all right in that area. I've been told that the sanitation in that area is bad. That the city hires folks and pays them a very, very, very hefty wage uh, in order to go down there and clean up, you know, the human feces and urine that is constantly uh, being bombarded on the side of the businesses and homes and the sidewalks and whatnot because there's either no public restrooms or maybe they're too far out, maybe there's no access, maybe people just don't care, I don't know, but there's city sanitation workers that are being paid quite heftily in order to go down there and take care of those problems. Now, I went to uh, Los Angeles, and that was going to be one of the last really, really, really big and significant homeless populations that I was going to come across. And I was told, and what I had seen through my research, that uh, L.A. County holds somewhere around like 80,000 homeless folks, uh, just in L.A. County. One of the most famous populations of people that are homeless that everybody knows about. You've, you've heard it, you've seen it in pop culture, you've seen it in movies and in books and TV shows, is Skid Row. I decided that, uh, that I was going to go visit Skid Row, that I was going to drive through there and really see, just from a, an outsider's perspective, a person that doesn't know the area, what would it be like? Wow. I have not seen anything like this yet. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it is. It's unbelievable. Stop filming, but I can see, bitch. I drove through Skid Row and the presence of the homeless population there was overwhelming. And it was really a sad, sad sight to see so many people just lumped into one area. Now, this homeless population in LA has been there for decades. I mean, many, many, many decades. And there's been just a big war on the homeless population there ever since. Now, driving through, I noticed there were sanitation workers out that were cleaning the streets. I had noticed that there was a very heavy police force a very heavy security force. Something like the district of Skid Row there, which is just right outside of the downtown of LA, uh, carries a population of about 18,000. And of that 18,000, somewhere along the lines of about 8,000 folks are actually homeless. As I drove through Skid Row, I mean, I heard all kinds of stuff. People yelling and screaming at one another. Uh, people fighting. It was not appeared to be a very safe place. Now, with the police that were there, during the daytime, you might be able to walk on through there, but it, it doesn't seem like it would be a very safe place at night when you really stop and think about it you know a very high percentage of our homeless population has mental illness or drug addiction and so if you have a whole bunch of people with drug addiction being lumped into and sent to one location what do you think is going to happen there's going to be drug dealers down there there's going to be folks down there that are wheeling and dealing and peddling whatever uh, for somebody to get high in order to make money they don't even care the average square mile through Los Angeles costs about $110,000 a year to maintain. You know, that's cleaning your streets, that's taking care of the plants or painting, whatever, taking care of the roads. But on the other end of it, Skid Row, each square mile of Skid Row costs the city something like $5.5 million. $5.5 million to maintain. 
that's uh, that's unbelievable that is an overwhelming amount of money and resources that are being just driven into the police force to be down there into the city sanitation into services and whatnot i mean could that money be used in a better light to actually lift people out of poverty to actually lift people out of that situation maybe so rather than paying for the effect of homelessness why don't we pay to take care of the cause that makes a little more sense to me uh, from LA I made my way down to Las Vegas some of the saddest sights that I saw while going up and down Fremont Street last night was there were multiple not one not two but many uh, elderly men probably older than 80 they were sitting in wheelchairs some of them amputees uh, holding signs saying that they were homeless they were vets they needed anything that they could possibly get to help them. We have people that are elderly. They should be not out on the street at midnight, one in the morning, begging for change. Are they falling through the cracks? I don't think anybody that's 80 years old would willfully want to be pushed out onto Fremont Street or the Las Vegas Strip and sit there basically as a public spectacle and hold a sign. You know, I've held signs all over the country, and every time I do, there's a sense of humiliation that comes with that. And you're basically, you know, kind of on display. Many, many elderly men and an occasional female in, in these wheelchairs, clearly disabled, that are homeless or whatever their circumstances are, begging for change, midnight, one, two in the morning. That is horrible. That needs to change. At this point, I have rolled over 17,250 miles. To have come this far in five months from panhandling and the generosity of others, that has blown my mind. And I, I sit here on this last day um, in a hotel room. I reflect back at just how incredible people are to one another throughout the country. And I'm very grateful for that. I'm very, very, very grateful that this last night I get to spend it in this room kind of relaxing. But then also I look outside and there are homeless people all over. There are. There are people that are sleeping up against buildings. There are people that are panhandling. And for me, tomorrow morning I get to drive back to Phoenix and I get to step out of this reality and step into a different reality. But at the end of the day, these folks are still on the streets. These folks are still struggling. These folks are still fighting each and every day. Maybe it be mental illness, maybe it be addiction, maybe it be, you know, a product of their choices. That life carries on for them. I'm in a tent right now with a pen and a pad and some know-how To know how to spit a dung pile a quarter mile of the snow plow Cause I go out but somehow my flow's compiling a style that's undeniable Ten miles high and the mightiest spider with insight that bends light and tightens your pins tight so you can fight and do mighty strikes at the plights of life The pen is mightier than any knife and faster than a lightning strike So master your life, we can do this right aye. My home is under a bridge in a tent on a ledge with a pit for baking and eggs. But my story don't end in the rubbish. Pinned in, dangling my legs over dividends. This is not how it ends. This is not how it ends. I can take a pen and offend 10 million men, then spend in defense 7.5 billion. I'm willing to offend millions for billions to hear this. The fear to die and steal his fear fist Twisted in viscous transmissions and vicious visions I'm making decisions and free living That's why I'm driven and I'll fight till the end So I'll begin in my chin with my pen My home is under a bridge In a tent on a ledge with a pit for bacon and eggs But my story don't end under a bridge Pen then dangling my legs over dividends This is not how it ends This is not how it ends this is not how it ends. This is not how it ends. Writing a 
about fighting a titan with insight but no fight to fight not tonight but tonight's not the last night i'm past the night so life passing me by i gotta try drastic times call for crashing inside and bashing the industry for trashing humanity slashing the vanity can it be a calamity a catastrophe if you ask me it will be the biggest disaster set free to plaster insanity then candidly disband this canopy of inhumanity My home is under a bridge, in a tent on a ledge with a pit for baking and eggs. But my story don't end under a bridge. Pinned in, dangling my legs over dividends. This is not how it ends. 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 It's not how it ends, y'all.